time I said growling the. How was that the That's cool. Wait for the moment by Wolfpack. Yeah, the lyrics is Ma, Ma, as in mom. Ma said, wait for the moment. Yeah. Gone home, went to bed. With all the other kids, they, they're still outside. And he, he plays football tomorrow with only <laughs> his best friends and people he likes. I think that's the lyrics. <laughs> 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 I love those lyrics. <laughs> and then Sharon, uh, if Sharon's involved, you know, he's a product kind of guy and she's a produce kind of girl. <laughs> and then I forgot the lyrics after yeah. that. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. That's Give a us good the chords real quick. How's that? Chords, uh, like basic chords, real quick. So, starting with a C. Then following with an E7. Or this. And then an A minor. Or you can do an A minor 7. And then you're going to walk down half steps to a B flat. Or G minor 7 to a C7. And then to an F. Then you're going to keep walking down to a, an E minor. Then you're going to walk down half step to a D minor. And then it's going to end with a G7. Extra seasoning, extra flavor. That's uh, wait for the moment. Talk oh, about these yeeks. The master luthier Noah Bonk brought these up yesterday from downstairs. He just completed them, and uh, this is the standard T100 model. Doesn't have all the extra bindings on it. It's not the deluxe grade. This is the base model. Um, still features a really, really nice pearl rosette, ebony fretboard and bridge. Super cool Goto tuners. I like these tuners for guitars. And just the, this is all Koa. This is solid Koa top, back, and sides. That's the good old Ko'olau sound. This is strung up with the Aho low G. That's a super powerful sound. But that old style ukulele sound. Like the classic. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it is built just by Noah. You know, it's with hide glue and all of the techniques he's built up over the last 20 super, plus years. Super light. The it's thing with like, these is like you get like the Ko'olau sound for, I don't know, maybe close to half the price of what like the average CS model would be, you know? Yeah. Really, really nice here. Noah builds a really good Ko'olau wood instrument. Give us a, give us a sample. So.
have these, uh, I think the Nui Nui protective guards on there. Yeah, both sides. Yeah, so, I mean, those uh, peel off and um, don't leave any residue or anything, but we're just trying to protect them. But we can send them with those too, you know? Yeah. If you guys want. Yeah, let us know. Like, knowing that your instrument is safe and if you really want to jam out on them and don't want to damage them, this is probably one of the best alternatives. Yeah, um, if you want to funk it up without funking it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much have this on a lot of my ukuleles. You got this super nice cool one. I like the curl. Oh, this one is nice. Yeah, give us a demo. I have a 100 series tenor. This is one of the base tenor models that you can get and is also available from Ko'olau. And it's always a pleasure to play some of these instruments because um, we're also used to getting a lot of custom models coming in from Noah and to be able to play some of his I guess basic models where there's not so much like inlays and binding and stuff like that um, it really takes me back and I remember growing up uh, getting started playing ukulele this was the type of models that you would be looking for um, if you want a really good sounding ukulele and so this one is strung up with the Aho Haiji tenor set, which is a fluorocarbon set offered by Ko'olau. Gives it a really nice balanced tone, clarity, and volume. So check it out. Inspires different ideas. <laughs> How much uh, do these normally go for? I think that's like twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred? Yeah. The crazy thing about like these so called basic models, there there's nothing basic about them. Um, you wouldn't even. I mean, twice. I guess the aesthetic is, but like. They have that sound, you know? Yeah. It's like, you wouldn't even think twice about dropping 2500 on a... Oh, yeah. So it's good. It's like... Well, <laughs> if you're in the market with that kind of money, yeah. But if you're looking for a sound... Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if, if sound and feel are of utmost importance and you're still not trying to, like, spend more than you need, need to... You know, that's kind of where the T100 comes in. Yeah. Plus, you can, you can pretty, we can guarantee you that you won't see a whole lot of other people playing the same model. <laughs> There's only a handful of these that are made every year. And even if, like, you come across a Ko'olau dealer, you know, sometime, most of the time you won't see these in there because they sell really quickly. Yeah, we don't usually have anything from Kolau in stock, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are going to disappear right away. <laughs> uh, I don't know, you know. 
it's it's funny like that like sometimes it takes an hour and sometimes it takes a few weeks but they definitely don't stay long All right, so we're going to get into some Petros next. What do you guys think? Let's do it. <laughs> 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 Played the wrong melody. Uh, um. <laughs> sure. You know that?
<laughs> we played that. That was a combination of like five songs. Yeah, there was a bunch of songs in there. Kind of, and then. <laughs> we're gonna play that for a. Kind of, and then. Michael McDonald's, uh. Keep forgetting where. or whatever the name is. <laughs> Oh, oh man, what a treat! Yeah, this thing can't doesn't only play, uh, you know, soft finger picking classical style uh, style type stuff. I pretty much play everything. Do this concert. Damn. Let's go over one at a time. I don't have the spec sheet for this guy. It's uh. Yeah, I don't, I don't have it either. I think it's Veronica pretty kept incredible. It down there. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously Spruce and Macassar Ebony and uh, Plain Maple Bindings and Petro's uh, unique Celtic style. I love how the fretboard, uh, like show the side of the fretboard there, Corey. Yeah, where the third, fifth, seventh, tenth, 12th, 15th, 17th, and 19th fret. <laughs> it's uh, Koa for that. There's not fret dots. It was confusing me for a little bit. Then I realized what was going on. Like, oh, those are the fret markers. <laughs> or the side fret markers. Side fret markers are inlaid in Koa. And then everything else is super curly maple. It's really, really cool. Because see the the fine detail in the just looking at the neck there's white purfling lines in between it goes maple purfling lines koa purfling lines it, it separates all the pieces here and it's a crazy crazy design it's only on top though i didn't realize i mean yeah you wouldn't eat it on the bottom unless you're <laughs> a left-handed player in which yeah. you have to suffer <laughs> yeah. Um, Turn it to the side again for me. That'd be cool. How would you guys um, describe the feel of the neck on these? It's more of a flat kind of shape. Yeah, it's slightly uh, thinner, right? Did it change? Pro profile. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm holding a. Well, I'm not sure if like there's any difference, but normally there isn't. But in, in, in general, like uh, I guess, what does that mean? Medium slender, maybe. This is more on the yeah. slender side. It's definitely on the slender side. <clears throat> it's comfortable. I mean, it it seems to really like. I don't know if it does make it easier because of the flat fretboard having a thinner neck might. But it's just, it's just so easy to play. Yeah. And uh, what is it called when the neck, it goes wider as it goes up? It's tapered or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one is, yeah, there's a slight radius on, on the concert too. So it's not flat. Yeah, it's not flat. Neither of them are flat. Yeah, but, um, like maybe 16 degree though. It's just so easy to play. Yeah. to us like you take them straight out of the case it's like pretty much dialed in yeah the setup here is like two millimeters of the tall fret don't say that people are gonna be busted you're like what it's 2.3 Corey. come on <laughs> either way that's really really low it's like electric guitar action in order to get like super low action like this like you really gotta like build the instrument specifically for it has, has like the perfect neck, neck angle too. Kole, talk about that one. So I have here a concert from Petros and you don't really get to see a whole lot of concerts from him. Most, he builds mainly tenors and then if we're really lucky we'll get a baritone but this concert in particular is made out of a wood that 
at a first glance, you wouldn't really guess correctly. Um, maybe because of the curliness of the wood grain. This is actually curly mahogany, believe it or not. And it's really beautiful. I think from, from a distance, it might even look closer to like curly koa, like a, a lighter shade of koa. Yeah, I think I've seen a, a bunch of koa sets that looked like that. Or parts of koa logs that were just super compressed and flamed like that. This also features like maple binding. And of course, like all the, like, the detail, especially in like the rosettes and the, the purfling and the inlays. It's really beautiful. As you can see, this one on the fretboard kind of has like a, I guess you could say a hibiscus or flower theme here. And this um, continues throughout the whole top of the instrument, not only just the rosette, but if you look over here, the inlays along the side, all around the top part of the ukulele features this theme. As we go to the side, of course, you would expect the side port or sound port that Petros normally puts on most of his instruments. And then on the back, the flower theme continues with a really nice strip coming down the center mahogany neck very beautiful work as usual from Petros and a much bigger sound than you would expect from a concert size ukulele it's super warm very deep and um, yeah I wasn't uncomfortable at all playing a concert size ukulele especially with how this sounds and how, it, how the neck profile feels I think you could gig with that if I had to choose like a concert uh, between a bunch of concerts to choose and perform with, um, I'd probably pick something like this. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I, I love my tenors. I'll always choose a tenor. Right. But um, yeah, if you take that choice away from me, this would be something I definitely would consider. I want to see a, a tenor version of that. That'd be awesome. It's just so warm and deep. Well, I think that the only sets he had were big enough for Oh, concert. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, Clay, give us a sample. I mean, just listening to it out here, it's like filling the room. Like, <laughs> it sounds so good. Yeah. If you're looking for a concert that plays and sounds like a tenor. <laughs> I, the other thing when I was trying it earlier is just, I mean, you, you were talking about this too, but it's like butter. I mean, yeah. it plays like so easily. <laughs> so if you struggle with like, um, I don't know the physical aspects of left hand play it's uh, quite a good one. Oh yeah highly recommended especially the way the instrument is built and set up it just feels really light to the touch and easy on your fingers
What was that like um, ridiculous uh, tapping thing you were doing earlier? Oh, before we started recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just a little ending to like a song I'm working on. Clay and Corey's <laughs> new courses, How to Be Ridiculous on the Ukulele. <clears throat> like, there's a lot of, like, I, I think tapping is kind of, like, in nowadays. Especially for, like, fingerstyle and guitar players. But it's so much harder to do with the ukulele. Yeah. As you have just, to push harder. You gotta, pull, <laughs> you gotta really try hard. <laughs> like, well, you it, don't see a lot of classical guitar players doing it, right? Maybe, is, is that it? Is it a nylon type of challenge? I guess you could say like nylon strings or nylon string instruments are generally hard, much harder to get that sustain you need to they're harder to get out. like that uh attack or i mean it's like harder to get harmonics like every like it's yeah. it's more challenging in a lot of different ways yeah it is but it, it requires a much more control yeah and, and precision precision for sure Whoa. A third fret harmonic on a concert, what the heck? Is that, is that like one of your guys' checks for like levels of instrument? I don't know, it's just like I've noticed that like when you get like a really high quality instrument in your hands, regardless of its size, um, it does all this things that you wouldn't expect like especially for you and i since we've been playing for so long yeah you know, like having like just a little bit more sustain on that on the c string adds a lot more body you know if you're playing high g for sure for sure so it's like yeah there's a question about like as you go up in the price of instruments does the quality go up yes it does um we just make it easier for our customers by providing them with the choice of the best instrument out there. I mean, the thing is, like, in a lot of ways, it's all preference. But, like, w one thing I hear from, um, like, for instance, that concert is the warmth. Like, it's not, it's not extremely bright. I mean, there's much brighter instruments out there, but it's, like, got this body to eat. Every note has, a, like, a full, warm tone to it. Which is unique for especially that size. <laughs> sounds so good. Yeah, this like even though moving it around, like you know, with the mics like being here, it, just the way the sound travels, <clears throat> you just go here. Yeah, it's like it goes like, like that, and then forward. You know, rather than just coming from here, just you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's a very wide kind of sound. It's petrols. Alright, let's check this tenor.
something like that. I think these are worthy of getting a second sound sample. It's a punch like a like an acoustic guitar. Yeah, like normally when I do stuff like <clears throat> it comes out really thin, but this just kind of like it's puts nice it on the front. Thump yeah. To the... It sounds like there's effects on here. Yeah, doing all the yeah, it's so easy. Up. <laughs> and you don't have to push that hard. Jeez. <laughs> Wonder how long you can keep the sustain going. <laughs> it feels like an electric guitar. Actually, it sounds like a bit lower. Yeah, you know, I don't know how much transfers as far as like all that happens with compressing online, you know, when you upload to YouTube and these different platforms and then what you guys are listening through. I mean, I recommend getting really high end monitors to listen to everything through if you're really into the tonal aspects and comparing because that'll help. But in some ways, it's something to only be experienced in person. These have a wonderful, huge, fat sound. So check them out. We're going to listen to a couple other mainland builders now. And uh, these are also really top level stuff. So stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned, Duke. Really good sustain. Corey, try peer in there. This Ono is like a completely different build style. He um 
uh, he's been evolving, you know? Like, when we had David Ingalls on the podcast, he talked about um, his evolution towards the laminate back and sides. Well, this one also has a laminate top with half cedar, half spruce. And um, it, it doesn't have any transverse braces, which are the braces that run uh, perpendicular um, along the top that kind of keep the structure in place, but don't really, I mean, they kind of hinder sound in a lot of ways. They're, they're, they're useful for their structural integrity that they give. Um, but if you look on the inside of this one, he's got uh, two graphite rods running to um, from the neck block to two blocks on the side that he has there that allows it to not have the first transverse brace there. And then um, by having a radius top and a two-piece top, um, he's able to not need the second transverse brace. So it's just got kind of two um tone bars running along kind of similar to what you'll see in like an arch top ukulele but what that allows is for this small body to really give a big full sweet sound i mean it's it's totally different i love it <laughs> sounds good <laughs> See it with the light. Yeah. Yeah, totally. At first, I thought it was like some new style pickup system. Check this out. Did you see this one yet? Yeah. Are you giving me a turn on it? Beautiful walnut. Yeah. The color of this redwood too. It's. Cedar. It's cedar? Yeah, it looks kind of like redwood, huh? It looks a lot like redwood. It's the first time I've ever seen these colored streaks. I, I swear this is redwood. Well, let me look. Oh, this yeah. is crazy, if it is cedar. Yeah, western red cedar and Sitka spruce. Okay, does western red cedar have this all the time? This kind of? No, right? Uh, no. It's like a very chocolatey. It's usually like less. It's that's got reds in it and stuff, right? Yeah. Wow. just ringing out
now play it without the reverb. <laughs> I know, right? Like, turn, oh, let me let my foot. You gotta off, love yeah. that natural reverb. <laughs> it's just like, there's something so pure. Wow. a cool brightness to to this even though it's a, a softer top it, and it's got depth and it's got kind of a sweet scoop to it um yeah doesn't if, if you heard this you'd be fooled that like you you would think it's a, a tenor <laughs> yeah it has like tenor bass to it just try to imagine what size of ukulele am I playing yeah <laughs> So, Calais has the latest from Chade Nelson's Pigeon Tree, and um, this is, I think, the best yet. It's so nice. I gotta say, I love the color scheme, the creative style to the inlays, yeah, the wood choices, and this uh, top is. There's like a is there's ancient? a document downstairs that guarantees it's a I forget twenty five hundred year twenty eight hundred years wow. old. Is that the same wood that was used in the cornerstone? That ancient spruce. Yeah, there's like yeah. there's like a a tree that's supplied some of the nicest ukes out there and yeah I mean uh, ebony sides and back Macassar ebony along with the face plate. Super glassy gloss finish on this. He really nailed it. But yeah, I'll shut up and Clay can show you what's up. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's a great you to just look at already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's crazy is like this is really creative. Like how this little piece is on the sound hole instead of a rosette looks to be is this like almost like an epoxy uh it's dish? it's a recon stone along with oh okay looks like koa and it's a recon stone yeah or oh. what is that uh maybe bubinga oh um, yeah that's bubinga yeah that is wow that's really cool if you get if you look really closely and maybe you know you folks can check this out on the the pictures for the listing but the uh Recon stone over here has like some really cool swirls um, right in between the um, pieces of bubinga. Again, the ancient spruce, ebony back and sides. It's almost like almost black and white ebony ish as if you look at the color tones. Well, the the back plate and oh, yeah, face plate, look right? Has... <laughs> look at that. That's black and white ebony for sure. Beautiful
noticed how cool uh, me, uh, my my hat and Calais hat here are. But um, it's a canvas top, really smooth, and it's got this like suede bill that feels so nice to just kind of rub. <laughs> it's got a leather logo. No, it's it's it feels really good. Yeah, it's like a really nice quality hat. And um, yeah, I guess you can get them at the ukulelesite.com. How do you like my little infomercial there? <laughs> <laughs> but wait, call within the next 20 minutes <laughs> and we'll double your order. Very tasteful. Tasty. That's the, the thing with Chade is he's like really creative. And um, he's got a classical guitar building history focused oh. on tone first but um but always kind of design wise thinking outside the box and yeah, yeah one so of my favorites ukuleles. so many ukulele builders out there you gotta find a way to stand apart yeah. from everyone <laughs> contact us um, quite often about carrying their instruments and sometimes we try them and sometimes we don't even show them you know we're kind of discriminate on who we offer and and um, what we provide we put our personal stamp of approval on it it's got to definitely hold the value for what you're gonna put into it and both of these guys are doing excellent work for the for what you pay to what you get. This is this is beautiful work, and uh, yeah, we're proud to carry such talented luthiers like David Ingalls or Chade Nelson or Bruce and Matt Petros or Noah Bonk and Ryan Condon. These guys are um, we we really have the utmost respect for them and feel honored to to share them with you guys here and i personally am grateful for these two talented gentlemen in the room with me here Corey fujimoto and kalei gamiao and uh yeah kalei give us a sample on this guy and then you guys figure something to noodle us out and oh yeah. noodle me out noodle mm. i'm gonna ono oh you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could use some food right now. Yeah. Even though that I had like kind of five hot dogs too. later. I mean earlier. Five? Yeah, I just I got home. I'm just eating. I'm like, damn, I didn't eat anything today. Five is out of control. Three. There are redondos hot dogs, so right. those hardly have any volume to them. Enough red dye to kill you. Though. <laughs> oh, that's a stain.
of you for tuning in. On behalf of all of us here at the ukulele site, I want to wish you an awesome week. Take care. Mahalo. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, hit that notification button for updates on all of our recent content. Aloha.